Ranger. Certain as well. Test. Make sure the push to talk system is working. Ranger. I've been following her. You're really going to like what she looks like underneath now. Hey, welcome D-Lab everybody. In the shop this morning, I have a beautiful Johnson Ranger 1. This thing is in immaculate condition. It was a kit, but whoever built it just did a super job. So I want to give you a little guided tour. This Ranger was actually sent here to be recapped and the owner also wants me to install a K1 push to talk system. So let's check it out and see what this little Ranger needs to get back on the air again. So we'll start out with the front panel. She's nice and clean, not a bunch of nicotine all over it like you see on a lot of these. All the little pointers around the knobs. VFO tunes nice and smooth. The meter is not darkened. It's a really nice looking Ranger. Has a few little battle scars on it, but I sure wouldn't do anything except run this guy and maintain its patina. Here's the back side of the Ranger. Just kind of sweep across here nice and slow. Chassis super clean. There is an additional hole right here. When it came to the shop, there's actually two wires hanging out of there. Somebody was pulling the 120 volts out of the radio, probably to switch a linear. Also noticed that we got a little crack right there on that supporting rod for this output coil, so I'll glue that. But she's super clean, really nice. This one has a keyer platform. Still runs a pair of the 1614 modulators. And you can see here, I do have the K1 board installed. I put that in earlier. I've got a little story to tell you about that. But first, let's take a look underneath. So here's the bottom side of the Ranger. We'll start down here in the power supply area. Still has the old caps. Part of my job is to replace all the capacitors but I wanted to give you an initial look over and see how nice and clean this Ranger is. Whoever built it just did a super job. One thing I noticed I thought was really interesting, if you look at every little nut and connections on this radio, somebody took inspection paints, they put green on the hardware and red on all the connections when they inspected their work. So whoever did this was obviously a professional. I would guess somebody in aviation by the looks of it. Really nice job. All right, first thing I did after pulling the chassis out of the cabinet was removed the side panel of the VFO to inspect and see if that old 18K carbon resistor feeding the OA2 was there. We call that the Chernobyl resistor because she goes up in a ball of fire over time. It was in there. Showed no signs of overheating. Everything in the VFO cage was nice and clean. But I went ahead and changed the resistor, checked the tubes, and everything's A-OK -okay in the VFO compartment. All right, so let's move to the K1 push to talk relay module that you see installed in this Ranger. The story behind this guy is, it was actually a returned module. A fellow bought it from me about a month and a half ago. Tried to install it in his Ranger. He said he just couldn't get it to operate. So he sent it back to me as defective. And I replaced it. So I thought, well, I've got a Ranger and he's pushed to talk. So I'm going to go ahead and install that module. And give it a full operational test. And you guessed it. There's nothing wrong with it. Works great. So my only guess is, is maybe there was some confusion when he was wiring up the relay to the function switch. There's a lot going on around that switch, guys. It's easy to mess up. You just got to take your time. It still takes me about an hour to install these modules. But my module is actually the same switching that you see here. It's just on a little circuit board rather than a standalone relay and other wiring. Okay. The other difference is, is this system only puts about 12 to 16 volts on your mic jack, whereas Johnson's put 200 volts on your mic jack. 
So that was the whole purpose of these modules to begin with. So if you have one of these modules and you're having problems installing it, don't get frustrated. Just email me and I can talk you through the process. Also, refer to your Johnson manual. There's about two or three pages that talk about this system. And of course, watch the videos that I've put on showing the installation. There's a lot of good detail and information there. Take your time guys, it'll work. Alright, let's give the Ranger a little quick test. Make sure the push to talk system is working. I'm in phone right now. Go to zero. There's my grid. Plenty of grid drive. Alright. I'm going to plate. You can see you have a little bit of idle current. That's normal. It's keyed up. She dips. Go to modulation. About 50 mils. I'm going to bring up the audio. Alright, she's, uh, she's modulating, but see that? That's not a good thing. If you have a ranger that's squealing and you hear that feedback, don't go any further. Shut it down because more than likely you got bad caps or there's a feedback issue which can damage your modulation transformer. So at this point, the guy sent it to me to be recapped. We're going to go ahead and do that. So here's some very important information that I need to pass on to you guys relating to these old transmitters. A lot of people get in here, they say I'm going to recap it. They only replace the power supply electrolytic caps and they figure they're good to go. It is not the case on this Ranger. You see these little wax caps? You have got to change them as well as the electrolytics. Here's why. This guy especially will leak DC and when it does it will affect the modulation bias current. Okay. As a matter of fact it will happen so fast that it can burn up your modulation transformer. And that transformer is as they say unobtainium. You'd probably have to buy another Ranger to get a replacement. So for the couple of dollars and a little bit of extra time it takes to change out all the caps in this section, do it. Okay, at this point I'm going to get in here, carve out all the old caps, replace them. I'll cut back and show you what it looks like then. And we'll retest and hopefully that squeal in the audio is gone. It will usually take care of it. There they are, the fallen capacitors. Served us well for over 50 years, but now take a look at the bottom of the Ranger. A lot of that clutter is gone. Here's my high voltage caps. Work our way over here to the modulation section. The filter cap there. A couple point ones tucked down there with a new ground lug. And just look how much room now is opened up around the modulation section because we don't have those gigantic old paper cigars in there. Audio's cleaned up. Got one Sprague .02 microfarad coupling cap. A couple little electrolytics. The only thing I still need to change is C69. This is a 1600 volt cap. Got to dig and find one or get one on order. That's the only paper cap left. Alright, let's flip around, fire it up and see if it stops squealing. Alright, same test as before. See if we've eliminated that squealing audio. There's my grid. Plate. And there's my modulation. Oh yeah. We're talking and we're not squealing. Mission accomplished. So it looks like the Ranger is pretty close to being back on the air. I have a few little details that I need to take care of, but soon it'll be back in the hands of the owner. So what's the takeaway from this video? Cap kits. You guys hear about it all the time. Now you see the value of just replacing all of them and give the radio a fresh start. There were some underlying problems that were solved by simply installing the kit. The evidence is right in front of you. So another successful repair of a classic Johnson transmitter from D-Lab Electronics.
Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again. Thank you.